Yeah, there wasn't much life left in that. You are now watching Farming with Duffy Ag. Welcome back to the channel. So we got a little bit of shop work to do between welding. Got something in this box. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that looks that looks healthy. So we gotta fix that up. This is a gate for the smart gate. They brought it out. Yeah, that's cool. So we gotta do that. You coming? We will jump into the shop and uh, see what's in the box. Before we get into the box, fresh order of stickers. So if you haven't hit up the merch store, every order, some orders I've thrown a few more. If I know multiple people are getting it. But let me open these up. So I was running low on stickers. Got the hook up again. So every order gets a sticker. I appreciate everybody who sent me the stickers stuck to things. So go hit up the merch store. If it's there, orders are going out. Stickers go on every order. So we got that, which that's good. That's always handy to have that come in. But Skid Steer is still here. And there was a lot of people that gave good comments. There were some people that said, why don't you pressurize the coolant system and see? Well, ordered since we didn't have one. Pressurized kit. I think that's, is that what it's called? Universal Cooling System Pressure Test Kit. So it's got all sorts of uh, connections. This is from OEM Tools. So let me flip, flip it around for you. There's the part number. We will see how this works. We have bought stuff from them before. Pretty self-explanatory. We'll pressurize the system up. And I'll dive into welding on that gate. And in the meantime, yeah, hopefully, hopefully we're okay. I don't know. It's been sitting here, as you all know, been working on the hoop building, got a lot of other stuff going on. That's why we're not, why I haven't messed with this. If you're new or haven't watched previous videos, well, first off, go back, watch them. Um, the skid steer had coolant in the oil. So first thing, less than likely being it, Swapped out the oil cooler, which is right here. That is actually diesel fluid that we flushed through it. Um, did three flushes. I'm almost hoping that maybe it had something in it and the pan wasn't getting all the way empty and it was just adding to it every time. But somebody did make the comment that more than likely it's either head gasket or cylinder O-ring kit. So... Yep, but we'll uh, go ahead and pressurize that. That should be full already. Yep, it's got mostly just water in it because I had to drain it down. I wasn't gonna fill it back up with coolant when I know I gotta take the lines off on the side to put new hoses on it. So we will find which kit, oh, let's do that. Which one actually adapts to it well. The one that was on there is good, so we will Slide it in, lock it, it's on. It's got a pressure gauge on it. So cap pressure, what do we have for cap pressure? Does it say? Remove slowly, 15 PSI. So on here it says to pump it to 15 PSI. So that is five, there's five. Alrighty, we'll let it sit and see. See if it leaks down, what it does. I guess we better make sure we're right on 15. There we go. 
So. Yeah, there wasn't much life left in that. So we'll clean it up, reinforce it. It'll be tough right here because this actually pivots. There's a pin that goes down through it. Cow must have got stuck on it or something or beat on it. But yeah, we'll be okay. galvanized so it's good to breathe in you're supposed to drink milk don't forget that drink milk before you weld on galvanized or in a well ventilated area yeah that's gonna create a little bit of force there on it okay so we'll get it cleaned up weld it and then we'll plate I think I got some good plates somewhere we'll plate it and that should give us enough benefit. Okay, we'll let that cool down. So, I'll put you off of here. Well, that's on, which this is the first time we've ever messed with this gate in over 11 years. Hey, Oaks, what are you doing? Bye, Oakley. Sister's dog. So, that's straight. Get a piece back together. Did some reinforcement welds. We'll do a little bit more, I think down and around, and more across the top. But we'll do the side. Doing the back's a little tough. Maybe I got some sections that can go up, but there's a pin that goes in, so can't take too much space of there. So this has been in my spare metal pile over there. But everything else is thin. We got some pipes that we use stuff for, but. I figured I'll just cut it down, send it. Yeah, that'll do pretty good. There we go. Two pieces. Clean up the edges, weld it on. Yep. You gotta just clean that up a little bit where I welded. Clean that flusher, send it. One side done. So filled the holes in, got the front, the top, the bottom, all the back. And the main reason why things break up here is because there's an air cylinder pushed against this. So this has pressure that makes it go open and close. So if something gets stuck <coughs> ooh, in between here and it's pushing on it, this is the stress point is right here used to be down there. I don't think we've actually done the ones down there, but. All right, do the other side. All done up now, reinforced all of that. Uh, I thought about trying to plate it, but it's gonna get in the way. So that is what it's going to do. That will definitely help quite a bit. We got everything done there. So yeah, we'll let it cool down. And then uh, I don't know what I got for paint to paint it over. Might have to get some uh, galvanized paint, just paint it. So this has been sitting. It's not really a good sign because 
Well, now it's down into the 13, 14 PSI range. I'll pump it back up to 15 and then we'll check it before we leave tonight. I was hoping to get to some hoop building tonight and get that back wall on. Because once that's on, I can really get the semis in and then at some point get the front wall on. But yeah, judging it's already 7.30, I doubt we'll be getting to any of that. But uh, yeah, once that's done, then we can start diving into my actual projects. And like when it's dark like this, not so nice out we can actually work in there and get everything done but all right. we'll bring this in and I didn't take it apart so we'll have to see how they took it apart see if we can get it back on So I thought this was a exit gate, but it's not. I see the scraper's not going back and forth. Come on, girl. Which probably means we gotta do some welding in here, but I think both of them are sitting here. So you kick them forward and then they'll go. But that means the little piece down at the bottom, it's wore out enough that it's not moving. So. Somebody is down in the skid steer. Well, what do they got going on here? You can go, girl. I think they got every cow going into here. You gonna go in there or no? So that's what goes on with the cows coming through. Oh. They got it. So that they could come in or they could leave. So it's free choice right now. Which is like a free flow barn. So they just took the gate off. Yeah. Alrighty. Where's the shaft? So we just gotta get it in here. And what goes on here? So there's this air piston. Cow comes up, moves it to that side. Usually this is shut, they got it off right now. So cow comes up, it IDs her, which it knows because there's a photo eye that goes across. The so door's shut, that piston moves and either puts them to the feed bunk, so like this cow. So to the feed bunk, you got one way gate so they can't come back. Or, it would swing the other way. Let's say if she has milk and permission, or if we need a sorter for something. So it would swing her in here. These are just finger gates so that they can't come back in. So we got finger gates on the exits of the robots in here. And then also on the return of the exit gate. So this is a three-way smart selection gate. And all of this is built in to criteria that it knows. So same idea, cow walks up, doors shut, IDs her. We got three different directions. Left, back into the uh, holding pen for a cow that hasn't been milked yet, that's just doing loops. Usually heifers will do that or whatnot. Straight, which will put them into this separation pen that has stalls, has feed bunk, has water. Usually, so these are two heifers and a cow that are all fresh or it will send them right such as where we went up to feed so all of that is done automatically so people who mount cows and who have talked about robots or whatnot there's free flow barns that have none of this gate because <coughs> people looking at this it seems really confusing overwhelming but at the end of the day these gates are pretty much a person saying i want to put this cow here or she can go there, or I wanna sort this cow. And that's done all day long automatically. So like those heifers, they could get kicked into this pen, milk, and then it automatically puts them back in. So somebody during the day can go and do chores and not have to stand here and wait and sort each one out. Same with this. So 
we have guided flow barns and we have free flow barns. Guided flow just utilizes the robots a little bit better, allows you to manage a little bit differently because you know when that cow comes to that gate, if she's a priority to milk, um, or if you have her on a list or something, she's getting in here instead of saying, I gotta go catch that cow. So both systems work very well, but it goes back to management and how you wanna manage it. So I've seen free flow barns do very well, and I've seen free flow barns do not well. And I've seen guided barns do really well, and I've seen guided barns not do well. So it's a tool and you utilize it. But. Alrighty, I gotta find where they put that shaft that goes through that holds it. And then we'll probably get whoever's in the skid steer to give us a hand. <clears throat> and we just need an adjustable, put that back on. So but cows want to get milked. As you see, she's lined up waiting. And we have it that it steps up so cows that are waiting are not actually in the holding area. So such as a scraper going by doesn't mess with them. So there goes one cow out. She's going right. There goes another cow out. She's going right. She's not milking. So she'll go in. Another one. She's hanging out. Threw the gate on. I actually left the camera sitting in the wheel loader while I did that. Made it quick since that guy had to get out. Be done for, with work. But not enough time to actually let this sit again. So I'll check it tomorrow. I I have a feeling we have an issue with it, but I'm gonna get out of here. Appreciate you guys watching along. A little fab work, a little talking about life, a little skid steer work, new tool. It's always nice. But hopefully we can finish up hoop building tomorrow. Back trucks in. Front tire on the white truck needs to be done, and we'll start diving into the project of the semi mac so appreciate you guys watching liking subscribing doing everything you guys are awesome keep sharing it up i'm excited for this year i'm excited to have projects rolling get stuff done and get into spring crop work it's going to be here before we know it judging what are we two months maybe from the first crop work probably two and a half months so yanko appreciates you guys watching at some point he's going to get his own shirt just got a lot going on so if you haven't bought a shirt Sweatshirt, white shirt, long sleeve shirt, black short sleeve shirt. What else we got? Hats. Hit up the store, duffyag.com. Yeah, it helps for all these projects. Helps keep everything going. So you guys are awesome. Appreciate it and have a good one.